Well, man, it's nice to be able to observe a map like Jumping Town that's not yeah. full of Bastion play. Something that we can sort of take more of an academic look at. Of course, Bastion tends to throw the numbers in all these different directions. But the main pick was interesting to start things off there. We saw exciting, you know, sort of play throughout the entirety of that match. But I have a feeling that Soul might want to make a couple of uh, adjustments or maybe roster swaps here into this next. Yeah, you imagine subs from both sides are going to come in here for map number two. Take a look at Soul Dynasty first. It'll be Miro coming in at main tank. No shock there. Miro here just to supplement a little bit. That bunny coming in. So, yeah, Wakid is out for this one. We know what Bunny's like. We see a lot of Tracer primarily from him, but it's not been the only pick we've seen him on. Again, likes to play, I guess it was described to us by their coaching staff that Bunny is a kind of player that prefers, prefers to do it all on his own. So let's have a look at the subs for MYXL here, man. Yeah, it's going to be Janice that yeah, comes yeah, in go. for Mono. So that'll be the only change for NYXL. you got to see this. No, NYXL, they've been very impressive throughout the preseason. And this isn't even them at like full form, right? You still have Libero, who is the DPS player, you know, can play so many different things, filling in at flex support. And I mean, he's doing a great job of that as he, well. He is actually doing a very nice job. We saw him briefly yeah. on Temple. I mean, there's not much he can't do. It's just, it's kind of another facet we're hoping to see from NYXL as time goes on. Is like what, what that provides. Are we going to get to see the depth of that sort of innovation come out like we did back in Meta Athena? Or if it's something entirely different? And there's the whole flower factor. We haven't seen that. So uh, yeah. things are looking pretty good for NYXL right now as it stands. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little bit to see the flower effect. You know, guy who doesn't turn 18 for a little bit. But they do have, you know, uh, Jonak. Very good Zenyatta player. I saw a lot of the you know, NA players on social media talking about how good his Zenyatta is. So once he can come into the lineup, you know, you have a very strong support staff. You know, we see their tanks. You know, when you can have you know, Mono kind of on your bench almost, right, as a secondary main tank, you're going to have a strong front line. And we know what Savio B can do on Tracer. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Uh, you no, know, he was one of the best Tracers in the world. We'll take a look at some of his clips throughout the weekend. This was the other uh, day in their series against Boston. Yeah, obviously, so Steve Yobby, it's no surprise to see you perform well on the Tracer, but the McCree was a nice flavor from him. We did see some of that during the World Cup when he combined with, with Flower. Flower was obviously on the Junkrat quite often. We saw Steve Yobby move over towards a bit of McCree play. Again, and previously in that Junker Town round, you noticed that he put a lot of effort into making sure he was able to flank effectively, get himself into the back line. One thing that sticks out to me primarily was him squeezing himself in on that second stage. Obviously, when you go around that, that S Pen, Serbi Obi immediately goes in and annihilates Toby on the Mercy and then continues to do damage, picking up a kill on the enemy Winston during that fight as well. I feel like he didn't really kind of prioritize going after Jehong on the Zenyatta. He really made Toby's life hell there on Junker Town. He just kept going. He's trying to assassinate that Mercy over and over and over again. See the best kill streak 18. That's a pretty high number. 36 limbs, five deaths. The guy is just a monster on Tracer. Yeah, and I think probably the reason why he's not too fussed about going for Jehong now is he knows if he tries to shoot the Zenyatta, Toby's probably going to yeah. be over there in a flash of light. Then it's going to be, uh, you know, the Zenyatta's going to be getting healed the entire time. But I mean, speaking of Jehong as well, he's also provided some interesting moments for us. On Junker Town, especially, he's played a few different heroes thus far. We've seen him on the Bastion and the May as well. But I mean, he's a star player, huge amount of fans, and there's, it's no secret exactly why that is the case. We've seen them put him in a bunch of different roles so far this weekend. You know, he's played the Zenyatta, he played Bastion, we've seen him on May 76, Ana, the solo healing on Bonnie when Toby goes over to uh, the Torbjorn. So it's uh, been a very interesting preseason from Jehong. A lot of people know him as just, you know, the Ana Zenyatta player, but we're seeing a lot of different looks from him. Yeah, I mean, Toby's waiting in line, by the way, for his chance to show the world what he's made up on, on roles other than support ones. Obviously, mostly, you know, performing his role on the Lucio, and on the Mercy, thus far. We've seen him on other roles in the past. That clip from Jae Hong as well. I'm glad they cut that short because he starts to go crazy with that coalescence here. But yeah, the main pick, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it looked, it worked for a little bit. Kind of like how Bastion works on Junker Town. It works until the other team can get a full stop, a team kill, and then you kind of have to change things up a little bit. They did a nice job kind of baiting some of the members from New York onto the payloads, splicing them up, you know, splitting them off with those May walls and then they were able to take advantage of it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, it also helps your goon squad single enemy heroes by freezing him down. The anticipation, I can taste it. I can smell it in the arena. We're heading over to the moon, ladies and gentlemen. Map two, let me underway in just a moment. NYXL, Soul Dynasty. Well, we haven't even Steven's game after Soul looked to make changes in terms of their DPS. We've got Bunny now in that mix. Miro back on the Winston. So when we watched Soul play this map the other day, they had 
Jayhung on the Moira where they kind of cut that clip off. They also ran a Sombra on offense. And then I believe it was either Lucio or Mercy and they had that mega health pack in that bottom right. They were able to just farm it. They had the Tracer go all the way around on that left-hand side and then just pinch on the point. They had so much just area healing that they're able to just fight on through. I wonder if we see them with that same look today. Saw Soul try and mix it up. Again, to a degree, it looked like they were trying to play, I believe I used the term step uh, a step ahead of NYXL. That proved, in the end, not to be the case, but you can see that there's thought processes that are going on to try and maybe play a little bit outside of the norm. Pine's Widowmaker has been stunning today. Give him a lot of fantastic moments. And when you can consistently pick enemies off at the rate the Pine has, you're crazy not to bring the Widowmaker. Gives you an instant man advantage. Can force an early resurrect out of Mercy can get a lot of free and extra damage into supplement someone like a Winston, so that way Janice doesn't really have to spend too long on certain targets to finish them off. There's really no downside to it when you've got a player like Pine at the helm. Well, usually on defense with that Widowmaker, we usually see Orisa set up up top. You can damage boost the Widowmaker, but it seems like NYXL is going to go with Winston and D.Va on their tank. CVLB will stay on Tracer, so you know, Pine's going to have to be a little bit creative, doesn't have that barrier to just hide behind, and this is the comp I was talking about that Sol ran the other day. They ran you know, Miro on the Winston, Zumba on D.Va, and they had Flutter play Sombra, and they also comboed that with Moira and Lucio. So we'll see how this works out again today. Again, a lot of focus towards the tank and support core of this team. Hope there's enough damage to supplement. And we have a Sombra in the mix. So, Soul Dynasty, a drive-by on the top side. They know that New York Excelsior is mostly set up there, but now it's time to transition to the point. Saviobi goes down early on, that's nicely done. Soul, blood in the water, they see it, they smell it. And they're going to go for the follow-up kill. With Janus also falling down now, there's way too much pressure on Ark to get these guys back up to full strength. Wow, they've been shoved right off the point. It's just so much healing between Moira and Lucio. You just stand on the point. It's just so difficult to push on through. You see Jayhawk there able to take out Pine. Moira obviously a support, but she can do a decent amount of damage as well. Gives her more resources to be able to heal up everybody yet again. Uh, there was not much defense played by the NYXL there. They're not done yet, Matt. This might be over pretty quickly now if Sol can strike yet another critical blow to New York Excelsior. Pressuring forward now, bubble thrown down. You can see Janus is trying to get out in front, get ahead of the curve and let his, the rest of his team set up behind him, but he wasn't offered the opportunity. Bunny goes in, the damage is there. Mecco desuited and taken down very quickly. A self strike on the point to zone New York Excelsior away. Matt Jehon coming through, coalescence here. Mostly looks like he's using it for damage there. Sebi is getting a face full of whatever's in that biotic tank. And it seems to have done the job. That's a pure 1v1. Jayhawk just knows what he wants. Blink and you'll miss it. Soul Dynasty get the map done with 6 minutes and 27 seconds in reserve. Some of the members of New York never even got their ultimates during the entire game. Some of the that members of New quick. York didn't even get to play the game, Matt. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was not great on the defensive end from NYXL. Push so dominant there coming in from Soul. Very interesting strat they used the other day. They were able to take point A yesterday. I believe it was against Houston, and then they got stopped. It was Jake with the Junkrat who got up top, was able to put down a ton of damage. They made some changes on the Soul comp. It'll be interesting what they run on defense. At least at the start here, maybe we see the Widowmaker Arisa combination up top. <laughs> Wonder what New York decides to go with. You know, knowing that potentially you see the Arisa Widowmaker on the other side, we've seen a lot of teams kind of have some issues on how to counter that, how to get to that high ground. Do you run against G and just kind of dive? Do you have your own Widowmaker? Do you bring a Junkrat in, try and break those shields up top? We've often seen the uh, the classic Widowmaker Orisa combo on defense on high ground. I think yeah. it was the Shock that did it first, but they're not the only team to have tried it. Save we got caught out early on in that round on, the, on that uh, NYXL defense. We didn't see it. We don't know what happened. And also Janice there as well. I don't think he expected Soul to be so close to jumping onto that second point. You saw him jump forward. He threw a Winston shield down. And then before he knew it, he himself was burst. He was separated from his team. They punished him severely. That was a very, very good job from Soul Dynasty there by identifying where their opponent was hurting most and just applying more pressure to the area. And once they got onto the point, Soul, I mean, the Widowmaker is very difficult to use, right? Because what are you going to do? I mean, you can kind of look through that doorway, but if the players play on both sides... The sidelines are pretty The sidelines yeah. are pretty limited. There's not really much that Pine could do there. So it'll okay. be Soul on defense here. So they completed point A and B. Six minutes and 27 seconds left in their time bank. They'll be playing up top behind the Orisa shield. They'll be using the damage boost on the Flutter. So it's a slightly more defensive uh, setup for Soul Dynasty on this defense than what we saw from New York Excelsior actually bringing in that Orisa instead of having a Winston. 
so far. YXL want to try and go around. Janus already on the point now. He's going to try and draw someone back to this one. Again, burst down already the half there. It's just Bunny flittering in from, I guess, the periphery managed to chunk him down. So, with Fletter being dropped, this might get a little bit dangerous for Sol. Now they need to respond or at least to try and keep themselves alive. You can see Zumba got a long way forward. Now he's desperately being burst, healed up. Fletter won't be returning. It looks like Toby wasn't able to get any reses. And now Janice is going to keep compounding the issue. Jaehong falls. Toby following after. There's no healing available for Sol anymore. And they had the tanks for New York on that right-hand side. We saw Janice jump all the way down onto Jaehong. And from that left-hand side, by that mini health pack, that is where Pine and Savio B were working. As soon as Janice jumped in, the DPS players worked around the backside. They were able to get rid of Jaehong, all the rest of the members of Seoul. So a very good A take here from New York. Uh, both teams don't want to play any defense here on Horizon. Uh, we see Toby actually play the Ana here. So very interesting Ana, kind of the signature hero of Jaehong. He'll stay on the Zenyatta. Oh dear, okay. Why Axel might want to try and continue this one. Now it's going to be Zumba looked to be getting DC, but instead he turns into a self-destruct opportunity. But he found Savior B with a Pulse Bomb, which is such a rare thing. It's definitely worth noting. But Pine will find very little with his Dragon Blade here. Seizes him out of just out of his range, tantalizing and teasing him, but he knows he needs to take a big old step back. Now might be his chance. No, Jay Hong knows better than to try and fire when Pine is reflecting, and now he's down to about 100 HP, quickly getting healed up by the Transcendence on the point. To the skies goes Zumba, trying to stall things out, make it hard for him to be hit, but the self-destructive Mecho takes down Zumba as he ejects from his suit. Looks like Pine still trying to find members in the back. Flutter's able to take out Libero. Looks like we have Attack Visor coming in from Flutter as well. He takes out Ark, Demex, Mecho. But it looked like New York was going to be able to tank that. It was just a stall that comes in from Seoul. Really like, get back onto the point. Both of these teams boasting very potent attacking strategies so far in this map. NYXL falling just short, only getting two ticks. However, the margin of error for Soul Dynasty now is reduced severely. NYXL do not have to spend much time unattended on the point to finish this round. They'll still have plenty of time in the bank if they can get it done with the next couple fights. Bunny waits in the wings with a pulse bomb here. Again, what's he looking for? A tank, perhaps someone like Libero or Ark in the back line? That's the question. Get Janice weak and they back him up. Look like Bunny was seeing potentially maybe get a support with one of these pulse bombs. He's getting pushed out here by Savio B. So. Aggressive blinking from Savio over there. If you don't know what aggressive blinking looks like, try in the mirror. <laughs> you see Bunny still trying to find somewhere to go with this pulse bomb. Sees both tanks. It's going to be Mecho putting some pressure on him. Now you see the, the pounce coming in. It's Miro and Zumba. They jump right on to Mecho. Ow! There. That was sick. I don't even know how. Notice he queued up the pulse bomb and then went for the blink animation. So he pretty much dropped the bomb as soon as he finished the blink yeah, itself. There's no time to respond to that. For a second, I was like, oh, he's so far away. There's no way he's going to be able to connect on arc with that. Drills him right in the face of the pulse bomb. Very quick recall as well because he knew how dangerous it would be to spend any more time close to Libero than he needed to. Uh, now we have NYXL with the Valkyrie, their own pulse bomb. It looks like they're going to get a transcendence here. Uh, it'll be Toby with that nano boost because you don't have the Mercy or the Lucio. You only have one sustain ult here, and that's going to be Jaehong's transcendence. Oh dear, that's nice. nice. There, and I know Anna recently gets a little bit of a buff back to how much damage she does per shot. It'll deal with players pretty quick. So the New York not able to use any ults in this fight. It's going to allow Soul Dynasty to build up more of their own. Toby doesn't normally get the opportunity to demonstrate his Ana prowess, but that was a fantastic little passage of play. Now do note that both of these supports in Soul Dynasty are fragile and don't have a lot of peeling potential amongst them. You know, if you have a Lucio Ana, then you can sort of help peel or a Mercy, obviously, to protect the, the Zen and heal him up. But they're sitting a long way back. So if NYXL want to get to these supports, they have to go very, very deep and put themselves at great risk. And they split themselves up. Libero was found waiting in the back lines. A straggler is punished there. There is slowness to respond. Gonna get rezzed up, but right in front of Miro, there's very little Libero can do right now. He's getting a little bit of healing, you can see it from somewhere behind Miro, but again, Miro is doggedly pursuing that kill. Fletter sees a sleeping monkey at his feet, and sometimes it's better to let sleeping monkeys lie, but he has a dragon blade, and he does manage to peel him off Toby for the time being. A melee attack will send Janus back to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, there's nothing Libero can do with that position. He gets rezzed after Ark uses the Valkyrie, and Miro just kind of stands in that middle doorway. It's like, well, what do you do? You either back out, you don't help your team at all, you're not able to land any discords, no heal anybody, or, or you just kind of try and push on through. He has to deal damage to Miro, try and push on through, does not work. So now NYXL, you used your Valkyrie there. You do have your Transcendence. Jaehong still with the Transcendence for Soul Dynasty plus Soul. 
has a Dragon Blade. One on the side of NYXL as well. We'll see where Pine, maybe you try and get him in a position where he can just prey on some of these supports. But is waiting for a bit more information about where these supports are set up. He's wondering how NYXL has split their team. He's found it now. But he sees the transcendence immediately. Libero doesn't want to chance it. He doesn't take the risk that he might get carved up into little bitty pieces. But Flutter wants to go in anyway. Ark gets caught up against the door. But somehow, some way, Flutter pulls up just a little bit short. But Miro was there. Flitter had backup, it wasn't just him against the world this time, but now he's in danger. Being pressured down by Janus, he gets himself towards a health pack and back over the wall to safety. Soul Dynasty, looking very, very sharp on this defense so far. Always seem to be the first one to make a move, despite the fact that NYXL is supposed to be the aggressor. Time and time again, we see, you know, from Flutter's POV or Miro's, they're just finding the supports for NYXL so split off, but not a lot of help coming back because you know, the tanks for NYXL, they dive in so far deep. So in that last POV where we saw Miro and Flutter able to pick up both supports, we saw Sable be trying to work his way back to help them. But maybe you got to get a little bit more help for the backline of NYXL. They're exploiting the lack of mobility of Libero and his inability to follow his dive tanks in. It's been working well so far. Save Yobby remains embedded close to this site by that low ground by the health pack. I don't know how much will get done from here. He was just waiting for his chance to spring forward. Miro getting a little bit more value out of that Primal Rage, jumping forward. Just reminding New York who's boss. At least for the time being, Pine, that's not ideal. He gets cut down by Jay Hong very early on there. It looks like NYXL are going to try and commit now. They're sort of in this fight one way or another. Zumba with a self destruct kill on towards Pine. Save Yobby very low, and Flutter comes through with the nano boost there. I believe it was a melee attack that secured the kill. He has a Dragon Blade, but why use it if you don't need it? Yeah, no need to pop the Dragon Blade there. NYXL did use Valkyrie. You're going to get very close to Transcendence, but not a ton of time left. Really, they put together a good push. I feel like Pine has held on to this Dragon Blade for a very long time now. It's really got no great opportunity to use it. Pine getting caught at the start of that fight. And it was also where he got caught that hurt. I think Ark would have been a great risk to try and get him res back up. And yeah, they have to get good use of this Transcendence. And as I say, that bunny connects with a Pulse Bomb right on a Libero. So you lose the one member of your team who has the support ult. It's going to be Ark, though, bringing him right back into the action. See if Libero is able to get a good use of the Transcendence. He pops it now, but New York nowhere near the point. Zumba now is trying to keep himself in this mech. It'd be kind of annoying if he had to try and resuit in some way or another. NYXL continue to have individuals, very important VIPs on their team, you could say, getting picked up before the fight starts. But now Mecha's going to take a bit more of a direct approach. No subtlety required with only nine seconds left in the round. It's go, go, go. But Flutter now, the Dragon Blade is saved, seems to be coming to fruition. He's looking for the Winston, but of course, Primal Rage is a factor, and Janus has that one in spades. Flutter up on the point now as well, maintaining presence, getting knocked aside. But at this stage, it's only Janus, and he's just having a bit of a tantrum right now. No one's paying him much attention. Pine eventually goes for his Dragon Blade, but he held it for too long, and that's going to be it. Good response. As the shots ring out across the bowels of both these battleships, it's a 1-1. One -one. And there towards the end, yet again, the same problem that kind of plagued New York in point B. Miro gets the effects of a Nano Boost, dives all the way through that main door, Splits both supports off you know, the, the members of NYXL. It was Ark not able to get through the door. Does not provide any healing for the team there at the end on Mercy. Miro is a problem for NYXL on point B. It's been said that South Korean plays are the artisans of a meta that involves Tracer and Genji. Being able to flank, being able to pick off priority targets. And you can see every single time the wind was taken out of the NYXL sails. They tried to make any progress. So they made one step forward, they'd lose a player. Half of the team was diving in, half was sitting around waiting. And that was when Seoul chose to pounce. It's one apiece here, of course, in a blockbuster, our final match for the preseason. Map number three is just around the corner. Stay excited, stay woke. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome to the halftime show, everybody. I'm your host, Chris Puckett, here for the final match of.